Now, a dream of a better life turned into a living hell on the shores of the Mediterranean. The UN-backed government in Libya said it is looking into allegations that African migrants are being sold in slave markets. We are, from the head of the Presidential Council to the Interior Ministry and the Department working against illegal immigration, dealing with this issue. There have been instructions to form an investigative committee to find the truth and capture those responsible and take them to courts to be punished. Now, according to reports, the trade works by preying on the tens of thousands of vulnerable people who risk everything on what's been described as the deadliest route on Earth. They use smartphones to connect with people smugglers to get them to the coast in the hope that they can cross the Mediterranean into Europe. Mahmoud Abdul Wahid reports from a detention center in the capital, Tripoli. These migrants were uh, rescued by Libya's coast guard in the Mediterranean and brought here to this detention center in the Libyan capital, Tripoli. Now, they are from several African countries and they say they have fled war poverty and unemployment in their countries. Some of them say they have nothing at all to live on in their own countries. They have taken a tough journey through the desert and they have paid people smugglers to get to Libya to try to cross the Mediterranean to Europe. With security and financial collapse in Libya, human trafficking and smuggling have become a growing trade. Not only African migrants who risk their life but also many Libyan locals pay people smugglers to get to Europe through the Mediterranean. Despite European efforts to monitor the Mediterranean, this crisis does not seem to be ending any soon until order and stability prevail in Libya. There is no proper registration for the tens of thousands of migrants when they arrive in Libya. Many are from West Africa, but also Somalia, Sudan and Eritrea but they come with very little money and are vulnerable to exploitation. Libya's economic and political chaos allows the armed militias and smugglers to operate with impunity, preying on these people for illicit profit. According to the reports, the business of detention centers is unsupervised in some parts of the country. Stories have emerged of torture, rape, and forced labor. And when the centers get too crowded, people are then allegedly sold off like goods in an open market. It's thought recent efforts to reduce the number of people crossing the Mediterranean are driving the growth of these privately owned prisons. The International Organization for Migration says trade in humans has become so normalized that people are being bought and sold in public for as little as $400. Well, joining us via Skype now from Geneva is Leonard Doyle from the International Organization for Migration. Thanks very much for being with us. So. Uh, just give us an idea of, of, of what, it, what exactly is happening in, in Libya right now. I, is there a slave trade there and how is it able to operate in, in, in the modern age? Well, shocking as it seems, it's indeed true. Uh, and the reason it can happen is because there's really no rule of law across much of Libya. Libya is a country as big as France, with a lot of space there. The migrants are coming through, they see things on social media, they see it right here. They see the promise of a new life when they go through their Facebook feed and they think something is wonderful waiting for them in Europe uh, because a smuggler has abused the system and has sold them that lie. They get off the bus when they, when they arrive in Libya and they're quickly put into kind of a murder machine, an extortion machine, whereby they're robbed of their possessions, their families are called, they're forced, they're tortured, they give them money, and then they're sold. Unbelievable as it is, they're sold in open public auctions. $400 for a laboring man, maybe a bit more for a woman who can be put in the sex trade. And this is what's happening right across the country. So it's high time the international community spent more attention on Libya, for sure. And how bad, how bad is this? What, 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 what sort of numbers are we talking about here? Well, there's about a million migrants living and working in Libya. They're not certainly all of them wrapped up in this, but many, many are being abused and, and extorted. The government is doing what, it's, what it can. There are big issues in the country in terms of rule of law. There's this, the government does not control all of the country by any means. We work with the government to try and help them in the places where they keep migrants in detention. We wish they didn't. We want the detention centers closed down. But we also want to be there to bear witness and to make sure that the human rights abuses that have been reported and that are happening are at least not happening in the government centers. 
It's very difficult to control areas under the militia control, as, you, as is well aware to everybody. This is a very, very lawless country, and it's incredibly difficult to, 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 to look after the welfare of the migrants. But it, what is particularly important now, I think, is that this issue is reaching global attention. Indeed, and a lot of people will be shocked to know that this is um, a, a, a functioning slave trade economy that exists in, in, in the modern world. I mean, it is indeed shocking. The modern day slavery is widespread right around the world and Libya is by no means unique. It's happening in the developed countries of the world and the undeveloped countries of the world. But I think what's particularly shocking is that this is happening effectively in the open, where people can go to a farmhouse place a bid and end up owning, quote unquote, a human being. So what needs to be done then uh, to, to, to combat this? Uh, I mean, we've heard uh, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron this week uh, calling for uh, uh, the UN to, to, to act in this regard. What, what, what needs to be done? Well, I think the first thing that's happening is very important, which is a sense of collective outrage, which is affecting the politicians. We're seeing a call, as you rightly said, from the president of France, We've seen it from many, many people. Many, many leaders across Africa have come up and said this is unacceptable. And they've been talking to their Libyan counterparts and saying, what can be done? The what can be done, a lot of it's already happening. There's a lot of money and effort being spent by the European Union, in particular in Libya, in helping improve the rule of law, improve the conditions of migrants. But it needs to go a lot further. We need to see United Nations boots on the ground. There are some United Nations uh, military in the country, but not enough. And they're not there to impose the peace, but they are there to protect the UN workers so that that can increase, so that there can be more humanitarian work. At the moment, it's a difficult and dangerous country to work in, and we need to expand that. Uh, and is there a sense of, of a shared responsibility uh, in all of this? I mean, it's very easy to, to, to blame uh, uh, Libya for all of this and, and, and the power vacuum that exists there. Uh, but this is a, a result of the fall of, 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 of Gaddafi, which uh, uh, many Western nations had uh, uh, supported uh, back in, in 2011. And, and there is the ongoing issue of, of, of migration to Europe and, and the lack of coordinated action by European nations there. So does more need to be done uh, as far as the international cooperation on this? Well, I think it's kind of easy to have that narrative that you've just given, and, you know, and, and that's part of the story, undoubtedly. But the notion that, um, uh, that because one dictator was removed from power, that uh, that's the reason for all this happening, well, I think that it's got to be more than that. I mean, this is, uh, everybody's responsible for their own lives, and the, the fact that there's lack of rule of law or lack of central control in Libya is down to the civil war that's engulfed the country at the end of the day. But there is an international responsibility, which is to help when there's, uh, uh, when, when there's a vast and huge humanitarian problem as there is in Libya. And that's what needs to happen. We need to see a more assertive international reaction. Uh, I think it's, you know, there are many reasons that people are moving through Libya. And I would suggest that it's not always the ones we point to. Part of it is, uh, you know, as I said, technology is, is changing. And so people can use a smartphone to figure out how to get there where they couldn't in the past. Uh, there is all sorts of issues like, um, are, the, are the states people come from, are they, you know, appropriate? Is the leadership giving enough uh, opportunities to its citizens? Is there enough transparency? Is there, are there gender issues? More, more broadly, are there climate change issues which are driving people off the land because they can't make a living and encouraging them to take a journey north? Are there, are there issues of you know, humanitarian issues like people being forced through violence to leave? Are they, in fact, refugees? So there's many parts of the story. I think the problem is that we've ignored this story because these were poor people from sub-Saharan Africa. And finally, it's come to public attention and people are paying a bit more attention than they have been in the past. Leonard Doyle, good to speak with you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting IOM.